So each day, depending on where we are on the mountain, we'll either take a look at some of the streams, the hydrology, take a look at the water there, or get to work with uh, Kenji Narita today with a tree canopy height here in the rainforest, um, or work with, with Ginny, myself, or Dana, or John, or any of the other teachers on the collection of these globe protocols. We are trying to figure out how tall this tree is. Yeah, about 50 meters? 40. The tree is here. Mm -hmm. Grand is here. Mm -hmm. So you measure this angle. Yes. yes. So with trigonometry, we were measuring the, no. the base That's and then the angle. Right? Yes. From okay, so the hypotenuse. Yes. So we could just do some basic yeah, trigonometry and get the height of the tree. Yeah. Oh. Got it. Yeah. Me, but we only see the tree. We made it. Day one. First day is actually okay. Gets cold, it rains. Okay, ready to go, guys? Okay, let's crack on. Go. You guys see this? This is almost a, a transition boundary, a line on, drawn on the mountain, moving from the rainforest into the moorland. You see the canopy going from 60 feet down to 10 or 12. This is our uh, second station. Uh, we're going to run some protocols here. We're measuring pH and uh, the conductivity of the water. So identical samples, uh, same protocols, and, and that's really the strength of a lot of this data, is that the number of years that it's been collected using the same protocols, we can then you know, build a baseline for that and then grow that data over the years. One of the questions we're asking or thinking about is if um, the glaciers disappear or decrease, how far downstream will that be felt in the ecosystems? We took the pH and temperature and conductivity of this river. And then we took samples to test. Yeah. To compare it later. The kids are rotating through um, who gets to do which portion of the protocol. And uh, each time they do something new, it's kind of new and exciting to them. And they're learning a little bit more about uh, each of those protocols as well. Um, why it's important that we do take these measurements. Um, today, one of the things that kind of surprised several of the kids was like the pH of the water. Why? And they came up with questions. Why is the pH of the water 5.5 as opposed to, you know, back home where it's a pH of 7? <laughs> There was a tiny, yeah, you could see a, a small amount of, of cirrus out in the distance. Every day during solar noon, we conducted some atmosphere protocols where we classified the different types of clouds and whether or not any contrails were present. No contrails, right? And we also measured the soil temperature at both 5 and 10 centimeter depths. My, my. Yes. What kind of heat transfer in the soil? That's conduction. Your brother is here. I'm really exhausted. I feel hard. Nobody's business. But I'm glad I did it.
thanks to club we made it to the top. This whole experience, it really has a chance to awaken kids' curiosity and show them that science can be fun, it can be absolutely amazing. And uh, you know, right now, the kids are starting to ask questions. Uh, instead of just being on a hike, they're starting to, to figure out things and they don't even realize they're learning. They don't even realize that we're actually putting them through a fairly rigorous bit of science here and they just think it's cool. So um, anytime you can get kids hands-on or out in the environment uh, doing stuff, it's that much better. But I think we're all getting a, a chance to do some things they've never done before.